back here on the Owls Media Network with uh, Keene State head coach Justin Blood. Tough loss today, 11 to nothing at the hands of Eastern Connecticut in a mercy rule game as well. Uh, it just seemed like, obviously, weren't able to get much going today offensively. Obviously, uh, Eastern has great pitchers as well. But uh, kind of what was your, I guess, thoughts on kind of the struggle today overall? Um. It was very disappointing that there was not a lot of life, not a lot of energy. You know, you're playing a, a conference foe and a top ten team in the country, you know, depending on polls, and there just wasn't – didn't seem to be any fight. Um, so, you know, I, I questioned our competitiveness and, um, you know, if there – I know we've had a string of some tough games and, you know, things haven't necessarily gone our way in the last week, but – you, you certainly can't feel sorry for yourself and mopey and pouty and uh, you got a team that's 22 and 6 I believe coming in here tomorrow so it's not going to get any easier so, um, so you, you can't hope for things to change you need to make your you know change your own stars if you can figure out what movie that's from I'll give you I'll give you a tip um, <laughs> but um, yeah it, it's disappointing for sure we, we we didn't compete well at all today um, yeah, so obviously uh, you guys seem to have what we noticed, I think, up here is you seem to have troubles lately at least with getting kind of the final out of innings. So notice that uh, on Saturday in that big ninth inning um, you had trouble getting the last two outs. But today it was kind of getting just the last out of I think like the seventh or sixth or seventh inning um, where the inning kind of just continued on. Um, how do you guys try to kind of stay – how do you try to stay grounded in those moments, basically, and just realizing, you know, it's sometimes we just have to pitch to contact and get that last out? Well, I think we've done a decent job pitching to contact this year in general, but what we really, to get out of those type of innings, what you're referencing, you need to be able to punch people out. You need to be able to get a strikeout. And I just talked about, um, you know, our inability to have confidence enough to go on the inner half you know, we if we have guys that don't throw extremely hard, uh, we need to still throw on the inner half to, to guys to make the fit plate feel uh, wide. You know, feel like they have to cover a big zone. Uh, and if you only throw to the outer third, um, you know, it's tough to put guys away because they're just kind of setting their swing for one area, one zone. And uh, we have to be better at finishing uh, on the inner half with fastballs and with breaking balls down and out of the zone, getting ch chases and swings and misses. I uh, noticed kind of in the pregame today you made a couple of uh, switches, at least to the usual lineup. Obviously you don't have always the same lineup every day, but uh, what was kind of your thought maybe moving Brendan up from number five to number two today and mixing around the lineup a bit more? Um, yeah, we actually um, – we have a program uh, that we're using this year for the first time that uh, is kind of like an analytics uh, team for, for small colleges. And uh, so they have a program where you can put your lineup and their stats and everything into it, and they'll spit out a simulated lineup that, that they think might be the best option for you. So I'm going to call for a refund. Um, <laughs> Interesting, but, um, yeah. No, it, it, I, I just figured we would – we would give it a shot today. That's that was the lineup that they that it spit out, and um, you know I think Brendan. The thought I, I I would assume the thought is that Brendan and Josh have good OBPs and try to get them you know on base prior to Chatfield coming up. But uh, you know not not one of them none of them really had a spectacular day, so um, it doesn't really matter which order they were in probably today anyway. But yeah, we. Who knows? We may roll it out again tomorrow or we may go back to more of what we've been using. So obviously you guys got uh, Mitchell coming in tomorrow afternoon as well. Um, I believe you've been undefeated this year against non-conference opponents, at least here at the Owl Athletic Complex. So how do you continue that tomorrow and kind of get this team back on track? So we're we're going to have to play well. We're going to have to compete a lot better than we did today. Um, you know, we'll have Brendan Muse on the mound tomorrow. Um, you know, he's hoping to get back on track. He's scuffled a little bit in some of his starts the last few weeks, uh, but he certainly is capable of having a great outing. Um, and then we kind of used this game once it was a little out of hand to get some guys some opportunities. I thought Joe Schleyhuber yeah. 
uh, threw well at the end. I actually thought Jack Lang had a, a good start today too. Um, limited their uh, their base runners and got some weak contact. But um, you know we'll have Zena and uh, Callie and the Brennans and um, you know the, some other guys in the bullpen tomorrow that you know hopefully we can follow up behind Muse and have some more competitive at bats and try to get a win against a good team. All right. Well, good luck in that one tomorrow. The Owls uh, dropping to. 13 and 16 overall, 3 and 5 in the LEC today. But thank you, as always, for coming on, Coach Blood. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, thank you. Thank see you. you. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school. It's about developing yourself as a person altogether. All right, I want to thank viewers for watching this. You can Catch tomorrow's game against Mitchell on the Owls Media Network, the Keene State Owls YouTube page, and we'll see you then. Good night, people. As he goes first pitch wing, that's in the air to left. Hudson is over. He's not going to get to it, and it is gone. A home run for Mason Ballmer. He will circle the bases, and Eastern Connecticut has jumped out to a 2-0 lead, but so more of the same for the Owls so far today to give up another home run. Tough break there. Try to sneak a fastball inside. Just got a hold of it. Yeah, he went first pitch lane. He was not waiting around on that one, and he smoked it. You have been watching a Keene State Athletics broadcast on the Owls Media Network. Please tune in to our next broadcast, and thank you for watching.